order to build a high quality network, especially when we're talking about mobile. So our next presenter is Badia Basabaka. She's the executive head of sales at Vantage Towers, a tower company here in Germany. Um, responsible for the Central and Eastern Europe region. She was formerly with Ericsson, I found on LinkedIn, um, up to the position of Vice President and Head of Commercial Management um, for the Telekom, Deutsche Telekom customer unit. And you named your presentation Connecting the Dots, which basically gives away what is the basic idea of a tower company exactly. to build all those cellular network sites, and we're looking forward to getting more detailed information about that. Thank Stage you very much. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, ladies and gentlemen. I'm more than delayed, delighted to be here today. Uh, I was planning to be last year. I missed it for various reasons. So even more than I am happy to be with you today. So uh, having the opportunity to speak on behalf of Vantage Towers, I uh, would like to grasp the opportunity to share shortly with you a bit of um, what is our ambitions, what is our role as one of the leading tower co in Europe. And um, as some of you might know, we have been founded in 2020 as a curve out of uh, Vodafone Towers. Uh, so you could say we are the new kids on the block when it comes to Tawarko in Germany. However, we are present in 10 countries across Europe, whereas Germany is by far the biggest um, market we have um, in Vantage Towers. And um, we see our role as being really an enablers for the digitalizations and to improve connectivity in Europe. How we are exercising this, how we are deploying this, that is something I would like to share with you during the presentations today. Um, we see our role as a neutral host, means our infrastructure is open to all mobile operators and non-mobile operators. So any customers that have interest or a need to host equipment on our sites. This is the traditional hosting model we are uh, promoting in Europe, and we also position ourselves as a 5G super host. This brings us to the um, point that we talk today about 5G. So um, I, I think that we had enough presentation this morning talking about the characteristics of 5G and how important it is. However, what I, the one aspect I would like to highlight here uh, from a tower coup perspective is that um, there is a, a real need to have a solid passive infrastructure in place, a dense one, in order to be able really to deploy 5G in the scale that is needed. So if we remember what this morning also Malik have said, so it's time to go to 5G at scale. And this is, requires from a tower perspective, also uh, a solid infrastructure to be in place. How we want to, to do that and how, why we think uh, the tower are really the real player here to enable this, I would like to quote again what um, Malik this morning said. He made a very nice statement that I really wrote it. He said, we love sharing. And we really do, also as a tower co. Our business model is around sharing the infrastructure. So the magic word is for us co-location. What does it mean? It means that we offer our infrastructure not only for exclusively for one customers, no, we open it for everyone to use it. This has different um, positive aspects into it. One of them is surely the efficiency and the economical aspect into it, so that it's, uh, it's quite obvious that this comes for the customers at a better cost level instead of building a new tower to co-locate on an existing tower. Um, this is also, from an uh, environmental point of view, also substantial, as we cannot afford these days, and it's not possible, to be honest, any longer, to just build towers everywhere. 
We build towers where it makes sense, and we would like to help our customers to uh, free up their CapEx um, to be used to develop new applications, new services, and to serve their customers. So we would like to contribute in the value chain here to enable the di digitalizations and the 5G rollout uh, in, um, in a more sustainable way. With that, we also enable other aspects of, of, uh, of the network optimization. First, with the sharing, we can enable some communities to get connected where in the past it was not possible from an economical point of view. Through sharing, it becomes possible. We also help our customers to densify the networks to have a response to the incredible increase on, uh, on capacity need. Also back again to also what this morning uh, Malik said as well about this carg increase of 40-45%, which is amazing. So that is uh, what we really advocate as Vantage Towers, the sharing model of the, infra of, of the infra uh, infrastructure. So the title of my presentations was Connecting the Dots. There is many dimensions. We understand that on uh, multiple dimensions, what are these dots? So the dots for us is like connecting from macro sites to micro. It's a connection uh, from uh, deep rural to dense urban. It's a connection from outdoor to indoor. So it's different dimensions into the, um, the dots. And only when we manage to really connect these dots, we are able, we think personally, we are able to have the 5G mass market. For these purposes, I would like to concentrate on these four pillars. There is many more, but I would like to, con uh, to concentrate for the rest, the remaining part of the presentation on these four pillars and give some examples. The first one on the left side is about the passive infrastructure, which is our bread and butter. The next one is which role we could play in the smart city concept, as this is very well connected to a 5G rollout. Uh, I would like also to share with you how we see also the indoor coverage. And the last, but not the least one and the most important point for us, and it's very, very close to our hearts, is the sustainability point. Also, how we can do that all in an ecologically sustainable way. So, let's concentrate on the first part. Um, most of you, maybe here in the room, knows what the Tower Coast are doing because exactly of this, because of our GBTs, the ground-based towers, that you see along the way when you, when you drive. But also if you go through cities, you see that also the, the rooftops. That is also the sites which we operate and maintain. And we give, a, and as a neutral host, also make available for many customers. Again, I would like to be very clear here, our customers are not only the mobile operators, but they are also these new innovative players that we need in the market, like the IoT, uh, kind of customers, as an example, the sensors or uh, the traditional broadcasting, media broadcasting. So all these customers that make use of this infrastructure can get access to our sites. Um, you will see more, really the rooftops more, on the dense urban area, on the urban areas. That is where it will be more and more going forward, more needed also to densify the network. That is where the most of the population are there, where the most of the traffic is expected. And um, as I said, we build also new, so we co-locate customers on existing ones, but we also build new towers depending on the demand of our customers. If we move further, if you remember the second pillar, it's about the smart cities. Um, 
I think this is one of the strong examples where I think the sharing concept is very important. Why? In terms of, of uh, smart cities. Because we need the smart cities, the solution for the smart cities needs to be integrated in the landscape. It shouldn't have a big impact in terms of visualist impact. And uh, for that purposes, so we are, as Vantage Towers, working very close with um, some players in the market um, in order to find solutions how we can enable 5G as one of the main drivers, really, for the, uh, for the smart cities, how we can help cities itself, how we can help the players to provide solutions for smart cities. We are at early stage here, and I think that is uh, valid for, uh, for many of, uh, of the efforts done in the market in this ecosystem, because we need to create the ecosystem. We all, I, I personally also think that a partnership is vital here to make 5G as a mass market and to make 5G as a driver for smart cities. So what we have done, and you have seen that, in, uh, you see that now in these two examples, we have uh, partnerships now with uh, companies that we pilot the solutions, in this case specifically in Spain, where we use the street furnitures. This is a quite obvious, Part of today's city picture, landscape, the street furnitures, and we work together with them around how can we develop these street furnitures to become smart street furnitures. What does it mean? Uh, in a smart city concept, what we need is hyper-local information. And we need to have electricity connections on these uh, sites, we need to have fiber connections, we need to be able to measure, for example, the air quality, the traffic, in order to be able really to, uh, to create the application needed for the smart city. So the example on the left side, we are partnering with a company in Spain where we have deployed smart waste containers. And this includes uh, space as well to host small cells, we all know, and my ex-colleagues from Ericsson knows very well, the long story around when is going to happen, the, the big rollout of small cells. We are still waiting for that, but I think the time will come. So we can host the small cells in, in, this, uh, in these containers. Um, we are also added sensors into this, and we also at the same time enable a smart collections of the waste. There is an application that uh, enables also smart collection of the waste. On the right side, this is a partnership that we have with um, Signify around the uh, smart pole, uh, where we also combine many uh, kind of uh, possibilities in the pole. So um, you can see here there is a, a display there, there is a camera, there is also uh, sensors in there. There is also possibilities to integrate also e-car charging as well on this uh, smart pole. So there is many possibilities that we can do. It's a question now around how to make it economically viable and also be able to deploy it at scale. The next one, I remember I have been told once, and it was at that time. It's not. A, uh, it was a surprise for me now, not any longer. That the vast majority of communication is happening indoor. So, how can we talk about 5G mass deployment if we don't give a solution for indoor 5G uh, connectivity? So, indoor solution is a, a really vital part of our su 5G superhost story. As, uh, as a tower co, and we believe that it's uh, no kind of, uh, um, or let's call it the other way around, that there is, where there is a need for a 5G connections, we need to have a solution. 
In this specific case, so we talk in indoor coverage either about small cells or we talk about DAS with distributed antenna systems. And I just would like to share with you this one specific example uh, because it's brand new. Um, you know, this summer it will be in Budapest, the, world, the Athletic World Championship. And this is a newly built stadium in Budapest where we have deployed, we just finished the deployment of a dust system there, where we offer four sectors with 32 antennas and we are hosting in the same system three mobile operators. They are the three mobile operators in, um, in Hungary. And uh, with that, we are securing seamless connectivity, we are offering connectivity for up to 40,000 with, uh, with the needed bandwidth for up to 40,000 fans uh, now this summer in August in Budapest. And by the way, I already booked my flight as well because I would like to be there to see how the system will be performing. So next year, if, uh, if I might come back here, I will bring you the measurements of the event. Okay, so, and now comes uh, an exciting uh, project um, because, as I said, everything we work for is sharing and sharing in a sustainable way. What does it mean for that? If you can take it one step further, is also uh, the point that we would like to bring innovations to our tower business. Innovation could come in multiple uh, layers, but this one is the most, I think, the most logical step that we should be exploring as a tower co, which is finding alternatives uh, to the steel towers. And in this case, um, uh, I'm, I was delighted really that exactly two weeks ago, we have installed the first uh, wooden structured tower in Germany. It, it's in a small village called Bestolsheim. It took me a while to learn it. Bestolsheim in Rhineland-Pfalz. Um, and uh, we are doing that together as an innovation project with a Finnish-based company called um, Ecotelligent. Um, and we are planning to have a second one on the somehow towards the end of maybe Q3 um, this year, a second one in Germany as well. Um, it's a very interesting story here because uh, what happens is that we have had a lot of resistance from uh, the people in that village to build a normal tower. They were against it. And it took us a lot of efforts, really, and it was good because it pushed us to look for new solutions. And they were delighted to where we came with this proposal and they accepted that we build the tower there. So it means that we are bringing connectivity to this village combined, I mean, with sustainability and combined with nice design. So back to what I said before, connecting the dots. So here we're connecting really sustainability to design. And uh, by saying that, I'm looking forward to connect with you later in the, in the coffee break. And before leaving, I would like to give you some impression about the tower erection so that you have a feeling around this exciting project. Bestelsheim ist eines der drittgrößten Orte in dem Verbund der Verbandsgemeinde Alzey-Land. Wir haben 1808 Einwohner. Using wood as, um, as a natural uh, resources, we can reduce carbon footprint and it's a sustainable version for telecommunication masts. Nachhaltige Digitalisierung bedeutet für Vantage Towers, dass wir auch neue Wege gehen, dass wir nicht nur für Digitalisierung sorgen, dass die Menschen vor Ort schnelles Internet haben, sondern dass sie auch einen Mast vor dem Ortseingang stehen haben, der auch ästhetisch ist. 
am Anfang war die Gemeinde gegen diesen hohen Mast. Was dann geschah, dass Wendelstauers uns vorgeschlagen hat, wir machen einen 30 Meter hohen Holzmast. Und da war mir dankbar. It arrives to the site in 10 meter pieces, which are assembled earlier. And in a site, we just have to put together and uh, the implementation is done. Wir haben jetzt ein wunderbares Ergebnis mit diesem Holzmast hier geschaffen und für alle Beteiligten eine, eine wunderbare Lösung. Thank you. So we have time for one question from the audience and I would suggest that everything else would be discussed with Badia in the aftermath in the um, coffee break, but I don't see any hand sign now, so we may even skip that and you'll okay. do thank it in you. the one-to-one -one discussions then. Badia, thank you very much. And now I'm handing over to my colleague Bernd.